Hello, my name is Kate Rampon, and I am a family physician practicing in Kansas City, Kansas. My mentor on this project is Dr. Stephanie White, a family physician in St. Louis, Missouri. We are honored to be a part of the Society for Teachers of Family Medicine Quality Improvement Virtual Conference in September of 2020. We will be presenting our poster, Evaluating Prescription of Low-Dose Aspirin to Prevent Preeclampsia in At-Risk Populations. Preeclampsia is a syndrome in pregnancy consisting of new onset, elevated maternal blood pressures, and proteinuria. Affecting two to eight percent of pregnancies, it is the second leading cause of maternal mortality worldwide. Low-dose aspirin at 81 milligrams taken orally daily has been effect shown to be effective in preventing preeclampsia in at-risk populations. Risk factors have been identified through rigorous research and categorized into two categories high risk factors, and moderate risk factors. The 2014 USPSTF guidelines expanded the recommendation of the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists to recommend consideration of low-dose aspirin to prevent preeclampsia in any pregnancy with one high risk factor or two or more moderate risk factors. We hypothesized that the, these guidelines were underutilized in our population and subsequently many of our patients could benefit from the safe, evidence-based, and low-cost intervention. We received IRB exemption status through Mercy Hospital St. Louis and were designated as a quality improvement project. Our effort to improve adherence with this guideline was twofold. We primarily used a redesign of our OB templates to include this consideration at the initial 12-week and 16-week visit templates within the notes. You can see on our poster the intervention in the electronic health record template asking providers to identify risk factors and consider starting an aspirin with appropriate documentation in the note. We provided a brief educational intervention with the resident physicians during a didactic session as well. We assessed adherence with these guidelines through chart review before and after the intervention, which Dr. White will now review. We reviewed 103 charts in total. We looked for risk factors for preeclampsia and whether or not aspirin was prescribed or recommended at the visits. Prior to the intervention, 24 patients qualified for aspirin for preeclampsia prophylaxis, and only three were prescribed aspirin. Post-intervention, 21 patients qualified for aspirin and five were prescribed. This increase was small and statistically not significant. The most common indications for aspirin prescription were nola parity, obesity, race, and socioeconomic status. As we expected, we were missing a significant number of women who should have been recommended to take aspirin for preeclampsia prevention. There were two major limitations to this study. First, our sample size was small. Secondly, due to the short duration of our study, many women who were seen for the initial prenatal visit after our interventions had not yet delivered at the time we analyzed our data. While we intended to look at a secondary outcome of incidence of preeclampsia, we were unable to evaluate this. A good follow-up study would be to look at our data again two years later to see if implementation of these new templates has led to continued compliance with recommending aspirin to high-risk patients in our clinic.